Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. No greater love. I'm inviting you to a sit-down chat about love. What kind of love, you might ask? I would say the greatest love of all, but that might be somewhat misleading. So let me use a beautiful scripture to set the tone of our conversation. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Ephesians 2 verses 4 and 5. In that one scripture, there are four words that excite me. Four words that speak of God in superlatives. Four words that tell us about our relationship with God. I'm talking about mercy, grace, saved, love. I know we're going to talk about love, or at least I hope so, but you have to indulge me just for a moment because when you find these four powerful words in one statement, then you are summarizing my personal story. God showed me mercy. In other words, in the whole business of my becoming a child of God, I met God's mercy. I experienced forgiveness. That is mercy. Do you even understand mercy? Instead of letting me go to eternal separation from God himself, he did the supreme sacrificial act and sent Jesus to earth. And listen to what Jesus did. He showed me mercy. He did not let me get what I deserved, which was eternal death. Instead, I stepped into something supernatural. I was forgiven. To be forgiven is to not get what I deserved. The wages of sin is death. So it was well in God's right to send me to eternal hell because that is where that is what I deserved. But God showed us mercy. God forgave us all our sins. And today, look at us. We are members of God's royal family as if we have never sinned. That, my friend, is mercy. And that just makes me want to jump for joy. Imagine I deserved eternal death, but his love, and that's another of the concepts, a compelling love led God to send his son. And this son, Jesus, showed us mercy, compassion. And I must say it again, for it is in the words spoken that we experienced mercy. Father, forgive them. Then the writer mentions the word grace. Almost everybody knows the ageless classic, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Come with me. A sinner, a, a citizen in a community has just built a brand new house. Two story, four bedroom, three bathrooms, you name it. He is not rich. But he was not poor either. In a surprising, surprising twist, instead of moving his family into the house, he found a family that was living in ugly situation, leaking roof, broken windows, and just about utter and abject poverty. The owner of the new house paid this family a visit and offered them the new house free of cost. I know it sounds unbelievable, but my friend, that is grace. When the writer says that we experienced the grace of God, he is talking about that side of God that made him demonstrate love for us by giving us a priceless gift called eternal life. And we never had to pay a dollar. And I have to be honest and admit that it cost me nothing, but it cost God the best, his son Jesus. Can I just tell you that there is no one living as a Christian who can ever say without fear of contradiction that they deserved grace from God? That is because if God was going to be strict in justice, there would be grace only for the extremely kind and loving ones among, among us. And that's a remote possibility. But his grace brought me a convicted sinner salvation. 
The third word is the word saved. Oh, I'm just about fit to be tied the way I am excited. Jesus saved me. You don't understand what I'm saying. I was practically in the holding cell waiting to be executed, but someone made an appeal to the judge who had sentenced me to the death penalty. And by that appeal, the judge cancelled the penalty of death. And instead, I was brought from the cell before the court. But this time, the judge looked at me and had great news. He announced effective that day, I am saved from execution and the case can never be tried again. Just imagine that prisoner. He was depressed, angry, miserable, because despite what might have brought him to this point that he was about to be executed for crime, he had committed. The death row inmate is now free. That is what Jesus did for us. He saved us. The last word I want to highlight is the word love. The unbelievable love of God. God has a great love for us. I am not going to let you miss that last point, so allow me to repeat it. God, the creator, the one who they say has the whole world in his hands, that same God has a great love for us. There is love and there is a greater love and we experienced the greatest love of all, the love of Jesus. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 and verse 8. This love that God has for us is vibrant, intentional, powerful, eternal. So I've been waiting to get to this point. I want to use the four words, love, mercy, grace, and saved, to tell you my personal story. I was a sinner heading towards hell, just what I deserved. But there was a God somewhere out there who loved me. I found it hard to believe, but he proved his love for me. He showed me real mercy when he chose to forgive me of the mountain-high level of sin I had once carried. Simultaneously, when he was forgiving me, he was showing me grace, the highest expression of compassion when I entered into salvation. And in the end, this recipient of mercy, of grace, has been saved from the wages of sin, but has swapped that out for the gift of God through eternal life. Romans 6 and verse 23. And now I am saved. If that is your story too, then you can share the ending of this story. We love him because he first loved us. There is no greater love than the love of Jesus.